Humans are affected by a whole spectrum of biological rhythms. If those rhythms fall silent, the organs cannot attune anymore, which results in lapses. The test subjects in this experiment were completely isolated from the outside world, except for occasional letters. It's strange as your body feels neither in one timeline nor the other. When you get out after having worked the night shift, it feels like being drunk. The aim of Virtual Sky is to bring a positive influence to health and well-being. The sun doesn't only provide life energy but also rhythm. For three billion years now, it resets our circadian clock each day. If we glare into sunlight, our brain produces serotonin, which also could be called a happiness hormone. This serotonin is transformed into melatonin during the night. Melatonin is the strongest antioxidant in our bodies. It binds free oxygen radicals that otherwise could harm our cells. Sleep makes us younger, and melatonin plays a crucial part in this rejuvenation process. Maximilian Moser explores the rhythms inside of living beings and the human circadian clock. This new science called chronobiology recently discovered which cells in our bodies conduct the rhythm of life. It was discovered some years ago that certain cells in the eye were responsible for detecting daylight. We have cone and rod receptors for seeing colors and levels of brightness. But there are cells on the surface of the retina that help us differentiate between brightness and darkness during the course of the day. Even blind people can recognize this difference. In the olden days, their eyes were often removed due to cosmetic reasons. But this had a negative effect on the organism. People felt sick every six weeks, couldn't sleep, suffered from depression and a bad mood. This is connected with those so-called circadian visual cells that are still there, even if regular eyesight is lost. We know that plants transform solar energy into matter, but it was also recently discovered that harvested crops retain more nutrients if they stay exposed to the circadian rhythm. Even cabbage heads get a positive influence from the circadian rhythm. They develop more defense mechanisms against pests if they are stored under the regular 24-hour change between day and night. Cabbage that was stored in the dark showed much more caterpillar damage. Fresh vegetables from the garden or the field contain so much goodness because they were exposed to the right amount of brightness and darkness at the right time before the harvest. Different rhythms are found with humans as well. The most important is the 24-hour circadian rhythm and the most well-known, the rhythm of day and night. Fifty years of chronobiological research have shown that man follows a whole spectrum of biological rhythms, from a millisecond of a single nerve impulse to year-long rhythms, and that those rhythms are connected, are in harmony with each other, 
Our rhythms are structured and work together like our muscles and our eyesight. This cooperation is a sign of health. If those rhythms stop operating, organs cannot synchronize with each other anymore. There will be lapses, a raise of blood pressure, other bodily functions get out of sync. Those rhythms help us feel ourselves. Andex near Munich is the birthplace of scientific chronobiology. Jürgen Zully was a collaborator of the pioneer scientist Jürgen Aschoff, who isolated 450 people in this bunker in the early 1970s to see how this would affect these test subjects. The test subjects in these experiments were completely isolated from the outside world for four weeks, except for occasional letters. They could do whatever they liked, and we observed passively how their sleep-wake cycle and their bodily functions developed. During most of the experiments, the test subjects could freely determine their own daily routine, when to get up and go to sleep. They went to bed when they felt tired and created their own day. One could say that their own circadian clock was unleashed. A bunker with small apartments was built especially for this experiment, so that each test subject could lead his or her own life. This was one of the rooms where a test subject lived for four weeks, or even three months. Their personal space consisted of a kitchen, bathroom and toilet, and it ended here at this door, which they only entered to get something from the hatch. In the schleuse. The hatch was built so that food or letters could be placed there without encountering each other. The door's locking mechanisms were synchronized so that only one door could open at a time. The test subjects decided for themselves when their day should begin. The most important discovery here at Andex was that we apparently all have circadian clocks that control our sleep-wake cycle and all other biological rhythms. They cause their own rhythm of up and down, awake and tired, and we follow it. And the second discovery was that this rhythm doesn't repeat after 24 hours, but mostly a bit more. On average, it was 25 hours. Sunlight corrected the circadian clocks to 24 hours. Frank Furt on the mine. The flight crew prepares for a long-distance flight to Tokyo. The time difference is plus seven hours. Jet lag causes a shift in the human biorhythm. Captain Stefan Pepper does his final rounds. He's familiar with the problems of time lag. The first night is mostly fine because you have a sleeping deficiency from the flight, but the second night is critical. The body reacts confused as the circadian clock is adjusted to a time prolongation instead of a reduction. The captain and his crew are in the final stages of preparation. Stefan Pepper has been flying long distance for 14 years and crosses different time zones several times per month. I usually do three or four flights per month. For example, crossing the North Atlantic twice, flying to the Far East, and then over the North Atlantic again. All this has a time lag of minus six to nine hours, or a maximum of plus eight, 
which is quite a lot. Also eine ganz äh, gute Bandbreite. You can't really adjust, because your body cannot. The circadian clock is set. You can only try to cope with your sleep routine. I have positive experiences in trying to get into the new day-night rhythm, but that's individually different. If I fly east to Tokyo, for example, I usually try to stay in German time. I go to bed late and get up early in the morning, following German time, trying to catch a few hours of sleep when it's night in Germany. Clearly defined breaks are crucial to reduce the strain on the crew. Hidden from the passengers, there is a so-called crew rest at the rear of the plane. The rest period change is scheduled after the first servicing round. Half of the crew stays on watch, the other half takes a break in the crew rest. After 11 hours, the tired crew arrives in Tokyo. Here, it's already noon of the following day. For the crew members, it's only 6 o'clock in the morning. After a night with only short breaks, they feel the strain. We're now on our way to the hotel in the city. In Germany, it's 6 o'clock in the morning. My eyes are burning, and I'm happy to get a couple of hours of sleep when we arrive there in half an hour. Working against their own circadian clock is quite common on the ground as well. Every sixth worker in the German-speaking countries works irregularly and also during nighttime. Sonja Wucherer is a qualified nurse. She wants to have the rhythms in her body examined for 24 hours in order to cope better with her work shifts. The examination device was originally developed for work in space. Mrs. Wucherer, this is the long-term ECG, the so-called chronocord. If you could come here, please. Let me hand this to you. Certainly. Please hold it like this. Is that okay? Sure. Please turn around. This is the on button. The recording starts when this blinks. Please sit down again. OK, thank you. Basically, you need to record two things, what you do and when. For example, when you drive home, you write car ride under activity. Position is sitting. Start is at half past two and you note the duration. You continue with this documentation until the recording stops tomorrow morning after 24 hours. OK. This heart rate variability, or heart rhythm flexibility as we call it, delivers an overview of all rhythmic events in vivo. The heart is like a mirror that displays all these rhythms in its beat. What's exciting is that sick people show diminished rhythms, whereas health improvement results in the strengthening of certain rhythms. 
Sonia Wucherer has been working irregular shifts for seven years. It's impossible to get into a regular rhythm here as work schedules are so different. Day shift starts at 6.30 in the morning and ends at 7 at night, whereas night shift is just the other way around, starting at 6.30 in the evening. Sometimes a night shift directly follows a day shift, or there are two day or night shifts after another. So there is no regularity or a way to plan ahead when to sleep or not. Please turn to me, Mr. Goldman. I'll support you. The right leg up and turn. Great. Now you can carefully lie down again. Very good. Healthy sleep is crucial for the rejuvenation of the body. Chronobiologist Maximilian Morza has developed a specific sensor in order to do better research on sleep. There is no need for complicated wiring anymore. We don't require as many sensors as before. Only this single one records the heart activity and its results can be analyzed in the morning. I'll turn the room dark now. The heartbeat looks fine already. Good night then. For a long time, we assumed that sleep was a state of unconsciousness, where all bodily functions are basically shut down, and we rest in some sort of rigor mortis, so to say. In the 1950s, sleep research discovered that sleep is a highly active state, but not in regards to body movement, but the brain. Only a few months ago, we found out that the brain is basically washed during sleep. The fluid that embeds our brain is flushed through tiny canals, which were discovered only recently. The responsible scientists describe this as some sort of chemical cleansing. Our cells, especially our neural cells, rejuvenate during sleep. It takes several phases of activity and deep relaxation to get rid of all the rubbish of the preceding day. During those five phases of sleep, our thinking gets more and more clear. And if we, for example, read something in the morning that we wrote the night before, we normally wouldn't submit it in that form. People who send emails in the evening often regret it the next morning, as they would have worded it differently now. Morning people go to sleep earlier and wake earlier as well. Teenagers are mostly night people. Good morning. Get up. It's 7 o'clock. This teenager is still in his final phase of deep sleep when he is roused at 7 o'clock in the morning. His body expects to be left in peace, that it's dark and quiet, but now he's woken up, which results in a conflict of messages in his body. His central nervous system tells him to follow his parents' call, but his liver and kidneys still want to recover, and therefore discharge substances that keep him tired, so that he has difficulties getting up and eating breakfast, especially as his digestive system isn't ready to digest it yet.
Rönneberg did a very interesting study in Munich when he asked people of different ages about when they feel comfortable getting up in the morning or what they consider the middle of the night. It showed that children around the age of 10 are morning persons, whereas 20-year-olds are night persons, and that you become a morning person again after the age of 50. Hildebrand, my chronobiology professor, claimed that grandparents get along well with their grandchildren because they are both the same chronotype. Early birds get up in the morning and are quite active right away, but they tend to snooze off in the evening, rather early too. Night people or night owls go to bed late, but their alarm clock often rings at the same time as the early birds. Several studies show that puberty turns children into late sleepers. Not one single chronobiologist believes that school starts at the right time in the morning. We all agree that school terms start too early. As a result, pupils are too tired to follow the lessons in class in the morning. They can't compute what the teachers say, which causes problems for their health and their lives in general. Therefore, we started to switch the start of school in Klagenfurt to a later time. A Waldorf school in Klagenfurt adjusted to the teenager's biorhythm. The start of school was moved from 7.45 to 8.30. The difference of 45 minutes showed astonishing results. Especially pupils from senior classes used to arrive late and were really tired, but this changed significantly. I teach ages from 13 to 14, and there were always three to five pupils who were late. That's not the case anymore. They now all arrive in time, which makes things easier for everybody. And I can say about junior and senior grades that they find it easier to concentrate because they don't feel tired anymore in the morning. They are all much more alert and awake now. After the change in the start of school, the weekly lesson plan was also adjusted following chronobiological findings. We also changed the course of the school week in a chronobiological way, which was a success as well. Mondays are short until one o'clock, Wednesdays until four, and Fridays are short again, so that there is a smooth start and end during the week. This change in rhythm also results in family life improvements. This rhythm suits our family very well. The later start of school allows us to have breakfast together. It's more relaxed and we start the day as a family. It doesn't feel like a rush anymore. The human organism's rhythm is influenced by the sun for 1.5 million years. The sunlight-induced happiness hormone, serotonin, is responsible for many complex processes in the body. It fights off depression, regulates the sugar metabolism and promotes well-being. Sunlight creates serotonin in our bodies during the day, as well as vitamin D, which is of utmost importance for our health. Therefore, it's crucial that we receive a certain amount of sunlight per day. 
a serotonin deficiency might result in depression. Also, this serotonin is transformed into melatonin during the night, which means that if we produce a lot of serotonin during daytime, we also have a big amount of protective melatonin at our disposal at night. People in the industrial states spend most of their time inside, devoid of natural light sources. The average American spends five minutes per day outside. In Europe, it's a maximum of two hours. Common interior light sources have a brightness level of 50 to 500 lux, whereas brightness on the outside ranges from 8,000 to 100,000 lux. The chronobiological control system is only activated from 1,000 lux on. The results of light deprivation are sleep disorders, lack of energy, mood swings and sometimes even heavy depression. Pediatric science discovered in 2003 that premature babies that grew up in baby units with lots of daylight and a darkened surrounding at night grew up faster, suffered from less complications and gained more weight, which is very important for the little ones. The same goes for intensive care units. Patients get well faster and better if there is a defined day-night rhythm. If there aren't any blinking or noisy devices around at night that could disturb the patient's sleep, and if there is sufficient daylight. Scientists at Fraunhofer IAO in Stuttgart research solutions to bring more sunlight into interior workspaces. If you consider that the human eye adapted to natural light for millennia, you can imagine that artificial light that only exists for the past 100 to 150 years isn't quite optimized yet. Therefore, we try to find out which parameters of natural light need to be emulated by artificial light sources. The solution is an artificial sky. The virtual sky brings sun-like light to poorly lit rooms and is also available to simulate natural light changes. The goal of virtual sky is to improve health and well-being, especially in rooms where there are very few or even no windows. It's basically like a winter garden. You get the impression that you can look up to the sky. And our study showed that the moving clouds had a positive influence on the test subjects in comparison to a static light source. They felt more comfortable and were more awake in the evening than with the static light. Also, specific synthetic materials allow to transport sunlight over longer distances to dark rooms. Light directing systems have a lot of potential. During the day, it doesn't make much sense to use artificial light in poorly lit rooms instead of using the available sunlight. Such light directing systems help to transport light into buildings. There are different variations. The most well-known are heliostats that follow the course of the sun, but they don't work if sunlight doesn't reach them. But there are also systems that are able to collect diffuse sunlight and transport it into rooms. The workspace of the future is supposed to be provided with light changes just like under a natural sky. Our contribution to the future workspace could be a display that follows the circadian clock 
depending on the time of day. We also develop systems that the users can adjust individually, but where certain levels are fixed so that they are still within the parameters of their chronobiological rhythm. The chronobiological science found out that not all light sources have the same influence on the human rhythm. Light similar to sunlight has a big influence. And there is yellow-reddish light that protects melatonin. Scientists discovered that this is the light of a campfire, which accompanied man for more than 1.5 million years. And we got used to this light so that it doesn't disturb us in our sleep. The light of a fire doesn't wake us, and the good old light bulb has a color spectrum similar to a candle or a torch. Electric light has existed for about 150 years, and it first provided a biocompatible light before we developed light sources that are more prominent in the blue color range. The sun produces a continuous light and consists of all color spectrums. LED, on the other hand, only consists of two or three colors. Our eyes may not notice the difference, but our bodies do. All modern light sources, like energy-saving light bulbs, fluorescent tubes and also LEDs, consist of a big amount of blue-greenish light, especially in a wavelength range where the circadian system is very sensitive. They suppress the production of melatonin, and we don't know yet what the health consequences are. Since the invention of electric light, many streets are lit at night. In the early days, there were only few warm light sources. Today, we speak of light pollution. Especially man suffers from the constantly glaring lights from streets, buildings and shop windows. Artificial light disrupts the hormone metabolism and the circadian clock and therefore leads to sleep disorders. Not without good reason do we speak of light pollution, similar to air or noise pollution. It disturbs our metabolism, especially its rhythmic aspect. It doesn't allow us to spend the night as we should, which is as a time of recreation, where we should sleep deeply in the dark. The use of artificial light makes our metabolism believe that it's daytime. And this results in a diminished production of melatonin that is crucial and should take place at night. Displays of all kinds are also lit by LED and produce make-believe daylight. Displays and tablet computers are also a problem, especially at night. We found out that the light from notebooks or tablets alone can suppress melatonin and therefore delay fatigue. Sleep and fatigue can be delayed for more than one hour. There is another conductor during nighttime. The moon. Many myths have grown around it. Most midwives claim that more births happen during a full moon, but statistics don't give any evidence of that. Statistics also disprove that a full moon leads to an increase in heart attacks. The same goes for propensity towards violence. Of course, these studies were conducted in cities where artificial light overpowers the light of the Earth's moon. Surely the moon used to play a more prominent part in the history of life 
than it does today. We know that it has a major influence on the reproduction of marine life. Many marine organisms have synchronized their reproductive cycle to the moon and live with its phases and the tides throughout the year. Man today isn't influenced as much by the moon as in former times. Big city lights apparently suppress the power of the moon, so that we aren't connected with it anymore. Only few people know the phases of the moon at the moment. Doctors start to realize that our circadian clock can have an influence on the effect of medication. It makes a big difference if we take them in the morning or at night. Also, blood purification via dialysis is influenced by biorhythm. Back in Tokyo. After a break of one day, the flight crew is on its way back to the airport, to their 11-hour flight back to Frankfurt. I hope you all had a very nice stay in Tokyo and uh, everybody could uh, sleep at least uh, some hours, especially on the second night, which usually is a bit difficult. Despite all professional behavior and routine, the crew feels the effect of the time lag. Our circadian clock got mixed up. I slept well at night, but with interruption. It's midday in Germany now, and I feel like going to bed. Now, during the flight, I get the feeling that my body already tried to adjust to Japanese time, that there's a change in my sleep-weight rhythm. There is definitely some strain on the body. The metabolism is stressed. You start sweating more quickly when it's warm. There may be headaches. It helps to drink a lot of fluids, but you feel very tired, even in broad daylight. It feels really strange, as if your body was neither in one nor the other time zone. You realize it in your sleep-wake cycle, and the meals you take in are digested differently. The performance level isn't so high anymore. You're more stressed by traffic noise, for example. You're more sensitive to such disruptions than during days when you're well rested. Now that I'm 59, I realize that I don't cope with it as well as I did when I was in my late 30s. So I need to consciously schedule more rest periods. For most of the passengers, jet lag is a singular occurrence, but it's a permanent strain on the crew. Personally, I think that night flights are the worst. No matter if it's to the Near East, Hong Kong or Shanghai, I'm always totally exhausted after a night flight. My biorhythm is out of control then. I used to like flying at night, but the older I get, I realize that night flights to Buenos Aires, Hong Kong or Sao Paulo, for example, put a heavy strain on me. I'm dead when I arrive at the hotel after such a flight. My main problem is the irregular sleeping cycle. I adjust to short periods of sleep so that I'm unable to sleep longer when I'm home after several work shifts. So I usually sleep for three or four hours and wake up again, even in the middle of the night at home, when I normally should be really tired. And then after three more hours I could sleep again, which is all very exhausting. I only know when I'll be home, and my wife does too. 
One of the results is that you don't want to make any decisions anymore. When my wife suggests to have dinner together, I'm usually so tired that I'm glad if she decides things. Until I haven't gotten some decent sleep to regenerate, I walk around like a zombie and am basically pretty useless. Scientists know that people with different chronotypes cope differently with such a strain. Night persons cope better with night shifts or shift work in general. They shorten their rhythm for a while and prolong it again afterwards when things get back to normal. Morning persons are more troubled by that because this chaotic rhythm causes a so-called vegetative disruption that can result in health problems, especially if those are long-term phases. Countries with electronic patient records are able to examine the impact of shift work on health. The Danish epidemiologist, Johnny Hansen, analyzed the data from thousands of female shift workers and compared them with women who followed a regular day-night cycle. Shift work have been studied in different uh, occupational groups, for instance, nurses and flight attendants and uh, in the military. And we have in all these studies found that uh, these women who have had uh, shift work for, uh, let's say, more than 15 years have about 50% uh, increase in their breast cancer risk compared to other women who only works during the day. We have very different theories. The first one that came out was that normally you are producing a hormone during the night called uh, melatonin. And if you're exposed to uh, light during the night, you're not producing this hormone uh, at the same level. And this hormone has been shown to protect against cancer. So if you are exposed to light during the night, you have less protection against cancer. Right. And the other one is that you sleep less if you have night work. Uh, it has been shown that you sleep about two hours less per night uh, and that influences your immune uh, system so you are not so good protected against cancer as if you are sleeping normally during the night. And then there's a third theory that means that your circadian rhythms are disturbed which means that there's some mismatch in the internal communication between uh, cells when you are exposed to night light during the night. Sonja Vuchera returns to the analysis of the data of one night shift and the following day. It shows her breathing, heart rate, brain activity and moments of tension between the different periods of time. This is basically an image of your ECG. Deep blue means that you were well rested. Red shows increasing stress levels. What we can see is that your cerebral activity was already very high when you started your night shift at 6. How does he seem to you? A bit depressed? He shows a bit more confidence. This phase of cerebral excitement stretches until shortly after midnight. Let's put this pillow under your legs. And if you look here, where there is less yellow and red, this is where you noted eat and drink. So, during your first break, you obviously got some rest and relaxation, which is positive. <laughs> Your cerebral activity is diminished, your pulse slows down. How do you feel during your break times at night? Sometimes it's hard to relax because you're always responsible for the patients. You can't just switch that off. Of course, a colleague covers for me during those times, but I still think about it. What you do is at least go to another room. 
where you can't hear the heart monitor and everything. I think that's what we can see here as well. You were able to ease your mind around the end of your break. There's tension beforehand, but it's released pretty well. After your break, you're up and running again. Cerebral activity is high until around 4 to 6 in the morning. The Danish studies show that few single night shifts put lesser strain on health. Especially steady change increases the risk of cancer. Staying awake during one night doesn't have a very dramatic effect, as you're able to compensate during the following night. It gets dangerous if there are several shifts following each other, especially if there's always change, like during those systems with three or five shifts. It's hard for the metabolism to adjust to day and night shift systems. In Denmark, female shift workers with breast cancer can request compensation from the state. Workers like night porters with steady night shifts can adjust easier and therefore bear less health risks. Shift systems could be improved accordingly following these findings. If we look at this peak in your heart rate here, I assume that this was an activity. Did you ride your bike on your way home that day? We can see how your pulse was raised and also your brain activity decreased. That's whenever I leave the hospital. Those 10 or 15 minutes of cycling really help. I recap all the events, and when I arrive at home, I'm finally off duty. It's 8 o'clock in the morning. After 12 hours of work and during broad daylight, Sonja Vukhara finally finds time to sleep. Ideally, everybody has several phases of deep sleep and so-called dream phases. Deep sleep phases are deep blue on this chart. Here we can see that there has been cerebral activity throughout the night. We can see that you still recap the events, as you called it. Around noon you were really tired and fell asleep, but the activity was still there. If we look at the analysis, there is one parameter that's called the sleep quality index. If this is higher than 50%, you don't have a sleeping deficit. Yours is 41.2%, which indicates that you didn't get the rest and relaxation you really needed. It gets more and more difficult each year, especially if you have kids. Your house, your job. I can see that with colleagues who have been working shifts for 30 years. Some of them hardly sleep at all anymore, others only for one or two hours. Afterwards, they aren't really awake, but in some state of trance. If you've been working the whole night long, it feels like being drunk. And sometimes you need to drive home by car. It gets more and more difficult the older you become. I'd like to suggest two forms of therapy where you can learn to relax and find yourself again. I'd like to invite you to take a little journey with me. Just lie back, relax and close your eyes. Fortunately, there are several forms of therapy that help people to find their rhythm again. 
we found out that breathing is a getaway for this rhythm. And that controlled breathing has a positive influence on other rhythms in the body. Let's find a place where you'd like to stand and where we can look at each other. Now let's walk over these rods. Start with the toes. It's all about awareness. Also, there are exercises that directly influence the rhythms of our body, like eurythmics, for example. Eurythmics consists of movement exercises that include breathing as well. It helps the metabolism to adjust. We found that it improved the quality of sleep significantly. People who did six weeks of eurythmics already felt a big impact. They slept better and were more awake and lively during the day. For more than one and a half million years, the rhythm of man was conducted by day and night. During the past decades, many things got out of sync. Let's hope that chronobiology helps us to adjust our lives again to the beat of our circadian clock.